All right. So um, as you can see, um, Lecture 9 took way too much out of me, and so I couldn't do it back to back. Um, I'm joking. I just changed my shirt. <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's do Lecture 10. All right. And um, there was something else I wanted to say there about... Yeah. Oh, and also, notice the glare on my glasses. I know that's driving me nuts. I'm, I'm going to try and <laughs> kind of look like this a lot when I'm talking to the camera, right? Okay. We've gotten to know each other by now. I, I don't think that'll be a problem. So we're in Lecture 10 now. We've got the notes once again. And again, half an hour, maybe a tiny bit more. All right. Um, so just this is almost uh, Lecture 10 and 11 will almost be review. All right. Uh, you'll see what I mean as we go through it. Well, let's, let's start right here at the beginning, okay? Well, we're going to talk about simple sentences just, just as a refresher. Remember, we've got your final paper coming due, right? And so I want you to do well on that. It's worth quite a bit. And so we just want to make sure we, we touched all the bases, all right? So we're going to talk about sentence structure and usage, okay? So the simple sentence, okay? Remember we talked last time about subjects and verbs, okay? Well, in English, this is not true of all languages, but in English, get the action at the beginning of your sentences. By action, I mean your subjects, okay? Get your subjects at the beginning of your sentences, all right? I wonder if that'll work a bit better. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So get your subjects at the, near the beginning of sentences. Don't. A couple of you have this habit, and, and it's, it's just something you, you learned along. You didn't learn it. It's, it's just, you know, it's something that, that you tend to do, and no one ever corrected you on it you back into your sentences. You start a lot of sentences with, with gerunds, right? Remember I pointed that out before? And if you did on your first paper, I just massacred the paper, right? <laughs> Gerund, and I had an exclamation mark and all that, because you're backing into, okay, the, the action of your sentences. Try not to do that, all right? Instead, get your subjects near the beginning, okay? All right, so get your subjects near the beginning of the sentence. So. In the example I have, John hit the baseball. Now, in the sentence, it doesn't matter what John hit, right? That's, that's the object. The baseball is the object. It doesn't matter. What I'm trying to show you here is, yeah, you've got your action, your subject, and your verb at the beginning of the sentence, okay? That way, and again, you don't, you don't have to follow my advice. I'm just trying to show you how you can improve. That way, you don't get into trouble with subject-verb agreement like we spoke about in the last lecture, right? If, like, like if you've got a subject way down, I've got a perfect one coming up in a moment, all right? You'll, you'll see what I mean, okay? It has to do with uh, the TV, all right? Okay, I think, I think I'm just looking here. Yeah, here we go, all right? I've got a, I've got a couple of good ones coming up for you. So, get the action at the beginning. Let's get rid of those gerunds, okay? Those ing words that we that I, I spoke about in week two. Week one, as a matter of fact, right? I might even might have mentioned it in week one, but I mentioned it in week two for sure, okay? Hmm. Okay, so we have different types of sentences, and it, and I'm not I don't want to confuse you all with all this. It's not a grammar course, right? It, it, like 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 I just want to show you a couple of very simple things to help you with your writing. We have things called compound sentences, then we have complex sentences, okay? So again, just go along with your notes, right? A compound, a compound, the simplest way of thinking about a compound, once again, I'm going to go off the notes, it's, it's a sentence that has a whole lot of ideas and they're connected with the word and. That's the most common. There are other ways of doing it, but it, it and. So notice everything is compounded, everything works together. That's what compound means, like if you think about compound interest, right? So Compound, yeah, everything works together. Everything works on the same level. And so the example I have, we had ice cream and we had cake and whatever. If you have younger brothers or sisters or nieces and nephews, that's exactly the way they talk, right? Well, in fact, that's exactly the way you used to talk. <laughs> that, that's the way we, we talk. When, when we first learned to talk, that, that's more or less the way that we speak. Right. And is, is, is one of the, the, you know, the easiest way to, to for, for human beings to make connections. OK, I know this sounds odd, but, but like I said, if you've got younger brothers and sisters or nieces and nephews or, or, you know, if you simply know younger children, you know that to be the case now. And so, like I said, and right, it, as long as you've got connecting things with and that, think about all the other things that 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 also uh, uh, connects to. So you know you've got 
all your ducks in a row, okay? I don't think I've ever used that phrase before in my life, but you also will know your, your verb, right? If ever you, if you ever you're connecting things with and, you, we talked about that in, in lecture nine, right? So you know your verb. It's where we start to get into what we call a complex sentence. That's where things can get kind of tricky. Remember the as well as? Remember that, okay? So the complex, okay, will have more than one level operating, okay? Notice how sophisticated I'm being here. <laughs> but, but you get the idea, right? So, but, but like I said, so think back to the example I gave you with as well as. You think everything's working on the same level, but no. And so the minute you start introducing phrases like that, that's where you create complex sentences. And I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm simply saying watch out if you do, because so many other things can arise, as we will see in a second. And so an example would be words like although. We had a great time, okay, although some found fault with the, direct, with the directions. So it sounds positive, but it's also negative. See what I mean? That's what we call a complex sentence. So there are other things we have to think about as well. Okay. Um, modification. Okay. If you think of modification, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples in a moment. All right. Of modifiers. All right. Modification. Because I, I want to do something else here as well. So in page two, okay. We have a dangling modifier. Dangling modifier is simply a word or a clause that modifies a word not clearly stated in the sentence. So basically, you, you think you're, you're referring to one thing when in fact you're referring to something else. And I'm going to do a bit with that in just a moment. All right. Um, and so, yeah, often we will have problems with modification. And I know this is maybe the 50th time I've said this when we have gerunds. Remember those ing words? I'm telling you guys, if you can just get rid of those, okay? If you don't remember ing words, having, giving, all words like that at the beginning of your sentence, get rid of those and your writing will improve, I guarantee you. So notice, right? And again, I'm jumping just a tiny bit here. Having, right, having arrived late for practice, a written excuse was needed. Okay, there, there are so many problems with that sentence. First of all, okay? You started with an ing word, a gerund. Having arrived late for practice, a written excuse was, was needed. Well, who arrived late? This is what we mean, problems with modification, right? Who arrived late? Okay. Well, in fact, if we write this sentence the way that we have written it, it's the written excuse that was late. And I know that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But that's what happens when we, when we write sentences this way. So instead, all right, you could have written, having arrived late for practice, okay, so what I'm trying to show you is if you're a really sophisticated writer, yes, you can do that, comma, the captain of the team needed a written excuse. See what I mean? In other words, now we know exactly, okay, what or whom arrived, okay? Much better, and now this goes back to for the first 10 seconds of this lecture, and I'm not kidding, wouldn't it be better if we, we did this instead, the captain of the team needed a written excuse because, right? Because he arrived late for practice. See what I mean? We get the action at the beginning of the sentence, get the subject at the beginning. Now, I'm sure one or two of you are probably wanting to email me saying, but doesn't that make for obvious writing? I'm only suggesting this if you are getting C's in your essays for this course and other courses. If, if you're still having difficulty, right? That, that's, that, that's all I'm trying to show you. So watch out for things like that. Put a star beside that one. And then, like I said, it's like the 20th time, like I said, don't begin sentences with ing words unless they are the, the subject. Remember the example I gave a long time ago? Swimming is an enjoyable activity. Nothing wrong with that, because even though it's an ing word, it's the subject of the sentence. No, no problem. But watch out, especially with words like having. Don't just, there's your simple rule. Don't start a sentence with the word having. Just don't. Reconstruct it. Your writing will improve. And so there's my example, okay? It's, 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 
Having trouble sleeping, the TV helps me get through the night, okay? And so, because I've written it the way that I have, it's actually the TV that is having trouble, okay? Trouble sleeping, okay? So, again, I don't, I don't want to, you know, know, languish on that or harbor on it, but you get the idea. Just don't start sentences with having. Remember, final paper, worth a heck of a lot more than anything else so far, okay? or anything else that will be on this course. And so, so we have two different types of, of modifiers then. We have dangling modifiers, okay? And a dangling modifier quite often means that you're missing something. So we already saw that, right? Having arrived late for practice, right? The, uh, having, yeah, a written excuse was neat. So quite often with a dangling modifier, you're missing a, a word or two, okay? So the reference is not clear. Not always, okay? But, but usually that's the problem. Then we have something called a misplaced modifier. And that one's really straightforward. It simply means you've got the word, you've got all the words you need, except maybe one is in the wrong wrong place. So take a quick look at the three examples that I have. Right? It's the same. It's the same sentence every time, except I move the word only around. And so again, I only had enough money for the show. Okay. Meaning once I paid for the show, I would. That's it. I was broke. Only I had enough money for the show. Okay, so obviously I had enough, but no one else in my circle of friends did. And then I had enough money for the only show. Okay, so the show came and went, and that was it. Only one show. All right. All I'm trying to say is the careful writer will think about things like this, right? Am I actually saying what I mean to say? So just be aware of that. That's all I'm saying. Okay? Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Like what I have in the notes there, you really can improve your writing if, if you're simply aware of these things. And so what I've done, uh, and I, I didn't make these up, all right, but I included for you just some newspaper headlines I came across over the years. And I'm not making, I didn't make this stuff up. I'm not kidding. It, you, you see this stuff though all the time, right? When, when there's just simply poor writing or, or you think you were saying one thing, in fact, you're saying something else, all right? Hmm. And so uh, we'll do them quickly. Include your, ba- your children when baking cookies. Now, we all know what the, the writer intended to write, but in fact, what the writer is saying there is that the children should be part of the ingredients. All right? <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, number two, I don't know. Number three is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's look at number three. Three and four, I think, are my favorites. Okay? Five as well if you're a bit older. Okay? If you're like maybe 25, 26, you might get number number five. But anyway... Prostitutes appeal to Pope. Now, obviously, what was meant to be said is prostitutes make an appeal to the Pope or to Pope, whatever. But that's not what was said. That's not what was written. So instead, what is being suggested there is the Pope thinks that these prostitutes are pretty hot. <laughs> okay? So that, that's what I'm trying to show you. Just just be aware of these things. It's all I'm saying. Okay? Yeah. And then panda mating fails veterinarian takes over we we know what, what they mean but <laughs> that's one of my favorites of all time when i saw that i just i just started laughing right anyway it reminds me back to i think it was week one or two right thank you for the lovely concert <laughs> and all the best <laughs> anyway all right remember that yeah death threat and all that anyway okay um and so literally what that's saying is the veterinarian now is going to have sex with the panda you know, obviously that's not what they intended, but that's what's being said. So I, all I'm saying is be aware of, of these things in, in your writing. Number five, I wonder if you guys will remember this. Uh, probably not, but I, I do such a good impression. I'm going to do it anyway. So we're not talking about Hillary Clinton now. We're talking about her husband, Bill Clinton, who was the president of the United States. Okay. And um, he had an affair. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to be really careful with my language here. He had a relationship. That's a better way of saying it, with a woman named Monica Lewinsky, all right? And um, he went on television, and he he said to the American public, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, all right? <laughs> I think that's pretty good. If you know Bill Clinton, it's not bad. Anyway, um, technically, he wasn't lying. Technically. <laughs> And I'm not going to say anything more about that. And I'm not going to answer any email because I don't want to lose my job. But just if you look up the ter- the legal 
term for sexual relations. He wasn't lying. Anyway, okay, okay, enough of that. Six, seven, and eight, these are perfect examples. Perfect examples of, of the type of mistakes that we, we make in first year, or, or actually many writers. Miners refuse to work after death. Now, obviously, something happened in the mine, and one of the miners died. So the, the, the workers are saying, look, we're not going to keep on working until these, these, uh, uh, situa the situation is fixed. But that's not what's being said here. What's being said is, once I'm dead, I'm never working for you again. Right? So you get it, okay? Yeah. Seven is a very common one, actually. It's, it's amazing. I think I might have talked about the word by before, B-Y. It's amazing how, uh, no, I'm coming up to it. I'm coming up to it. It's, it's funny. I remember, right, the way I've laid the lecture out. I'm going to talk about the word by in just a moment. So what's being said there is literally the, 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 the tree walked around and found, eventually found the stolen painting. Now, we know what they mean. It was laying by the tree. But again, that's not what's being said. Okay? And then number eight, and I think that's the last one. Uh, it, uh, again, I don't know if it's funny, but the what's being said is they actually, the two sisters stood in line for 18 years and then finally recognized each other. And obviously, you know, that's not what was meant. Okay. A couple of stylistic things. Yeah, like I said, 20, 20, 25, 30 minutes at the most. A um, couple of stylistic things. Parallel construction. I might have written that on your first paper. Watch out for that on the final paper, especially when it comes to your introduction. When you're laying out your points of reference, well, remember what we talked about, how you set up an introduction with your general opening sentence, and then you have your sections, and you have your thesis, remember all that? When you're laying out your sections, be consistent. So take a look at the example that I have there. And again, this is true for any paper you're going to write. The woman was confident, intelligent, and knew how to express herself. So notice, I've got one word, one word, but then I've got a whole lot of words. So it would be better to say, the woman was confident, intelligent, and articulate. See what I mean? How you're nice and consistent in the way that you express yourself. That's all. That's all. That's what, that's what parallelism, parallelism, parallelism means, right? Parallel construction. Okay, so just, yeah, just watch out for that. Then we have, this is the, going back to the word BY, right? Sorry, I'm going to sneeze for a moment. I got a bit of a cold. <coughs> Sorry about that. I don't want to have to go and redo the whole lecture again, all right? So, yeah, I have a bit of a summer cold. I don't know why, but, um, and so like I was saying, the word BY, BY, the bill was approved by the board. It's this, it's this construction. I used to do this all the time, all right? It's called, the, it, for me, I call it the was by, the was by. The bill was approved by the board. Instead, why not simply write, the board approved the bill? See the difference? And in a sense, that goes back to, right? Let me just see in my, my notes here. I just want to check one thing. I just want to make sure I don't confuse you. Yeah, it goes back to the very beginning of this, of this lecture, right, of lecture 10. Keep the action at the beginning. Now, are there times where you might use the passive voice? Sure, sure. I'm not saying you always have to do it the same way. But watch out for that construction, the was by. Okay, the bill was approved by. Instead, the board approved the bill. Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry that I have to do this. Sorry about that. And then we also have what we call stretchers. To be is a big one, right? To be or not to be. No. Um, but he, uh, yeah, but the phrase to be, he seems to be upset. Well, why not just write, he seems upset? Unless, of course, you have a word count and you need to get to it. <laughs> then maybe you want to make a note of those. Okay, I remember I can use that phrase. And the, but, but watch out for stuff like that, okay? And then, um, and use of as well, right? His use of dialogue is effective. His dialogue is effective. So again, remember what I said to you, I think in lecture nine, I said that this lecture today would simply be on usage, just some finer points, that's all. So let's go back to the top of page four just for a moment. Where would I you know, think about using a, 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 a construction like that? Maybe in your intro, all right? In other places, right? 
with the, the passive and the active, right? Well, again, there might be times where you use the passive, right? But for the most part, you want to stay in the active, I would argue, okay? I would think. Now, here's an interesting one, okay? Inclusive and non-sexist language. When I say that in class, okay, the students think that I'm getting very liberal, right? Right, you know what I mean? Like, like uh, I get the Birkenstocks out or whatever, and uh, like, like uh, uh, granola, whatever. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. What I've noticed in the past, I don't see it as often lately, but I have noticed that people will write, they, they want to be inclusive, so they'll write S slash he. In other words, she, he, she, he. Or they'll write he or she or she or he. Okay? Um, this can, can really get clunky right? And so instead, why not write in the plural? Instead of saying the, you know, the student or whatever, and now you have to figure out he or she or what have you, why not instead say students? And if you write in the plural, you never have to worry about that, right? And you also don't necessarily offend anyone, okay? So again, I'm not trying to be politically correct. I'm simply saying be inclusive, right? So, okay, anyway. So, yeah, be aware of that. And, and that works very well for, for literary papers, by the way, right? This notion of writing in the plural, okay? All right, anyway. Yeah, I think we're only going to be about 25 minutes. And so, actually, there's, there's a few things I want to talk about at the end. I'll probably send you something uh, in relation to, yeah, yeah. So, sorry about that. I might, might go a tiny bit longer. Euphemisms. Okay, I think we're all aware of euphemisms. And the only reason I bring them up, this is more for outside of writing. What I'm suggesting is um, you want to be careful with your word choices. All right? And so, uh, yeah, you see a lot of this nowadays, right? Layoff, downsize. I'm looking at corporate examples here or outsource, right? And so... The, the, the only reason why I include euphemisms, try to avoid them in essays, right? Find the right words. Find the right words. Colloquialism, okay, and euphemism, right? Instead, yeah, find the right word. I, I, I don't think I need to say much more about that. And then notice, almost, I think, the second last... Actually, it's the, the last... Actually, no, it's the second last thing because there is one last thing I want to show. Um, why did you hate Shakespeare in high school? Okay, I know some of you are sitting there thinking, oh my God, like, no, I loved Shakespeare. Many of you didn't, many of you didn't. And I don't blame you, I don't blame you. If you take a look at the notes here, okay? If we include all of the prefixes and suffixes when it comes to words, okay? Uh, let, let me just, let me rephrase that. One or two of you will feel the need to email me saying, well, actually you're wrong. There's only 176,000 words in the English language, okay? It's 174, 176. That's the word, the number that is thrown around. I'm aware. I'm aware. So so don't email me, okay? I was about to say something like lecture nine, but anyway. <laughs> French fry? Belgium waffle? <laughs> anyway. Um, the average vocabulary of uh, a, a graduate of high school, and I'm pretending now that we're all just out of high school, Okay. Uh, the average vocabulary is about 3,000 words, okay? Don't email me. <laughs> I know more than that, okay? All I'm saying is studies have shown that if you were given a test and the test was simply words without any context, just the word on its own, you could probably define about 3,000, all right? In class, I have a bit of fun with that as well, all right? Um, yeah, it's amazing some of the numbers that are thrown around. Uh, one guy, one, he said 100, <laughs> And I thought, and I actually said in, the, in front of the entire class, how in the hell do you get through the day <laughs> if you only know 100 words? Right? What is interesting, though, is that the, the, the most of us use 2,000 different words for almost every situation. Okay, What I mean by that is there's about 2,000 words you need to know in order to get you through your life. There's something called the registry, okay, the language registry, and it actually shows, right, like uh, like common words, what have you, 2,000, okay? But as I said, but most vocabularies, most high school uh, graduates, it's about 3,000 to 3,500, somewhere in there, somewhere in there. Shakespeare, 
How many different words in Shakespeare, right? 11,000. So tell me if this sounds like... Tell me if this sounds familiar. You didn't really appreciate Shakespeare in high school. You spent most of your time looking up what words meant, right? When you get older, go back and, and read Shakespeare. It, it, he's amazing. But I'll be honest, I didn't understand much of it in high school either, all right? In fact, if we go back to the last lecture, week nine, or lecture nine, um, if we look at a word like ride, and then we look at a word riding, okay, or rides, if we include all of those as different words, then there's over a million words in the English language. And in fact, in 2037, the new Oxford English Dictionary will be coming out. And by that, I mean the hardcover, like the actual set. If you've ever seen, if you've ever seen a set of the actual Oxford English Dictionary, it is massive. And if you open it up, but by the way, it's not one volume. It, it's, 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 you know, can't even remember now. I'm just trying to think. I've seen a set before. We have one uh, in our, our, we used to have one in, in the English department. And it took up almost an entire wall. And if you open up one of the, the, the books, they were big, like big, big books. And if you open them up, you needed a magnifying glass to look at the, the definitions. That's how small the print was. So the language, the language, and, and by the way, that is being added to exponentially. Every day, new words are coming in, right? Think about, you know, technology, medicine, okay, what have you. And so... Um, I included with you, yeah, the, the last hardcover that came out was in 2015. I just added a, a, a couple there. Uh, some you might find funny, some you might not. And I don't want to waste your time on that. Man spreading, there's one I, I, I've noticed being used lately. But at the bottom, I would ask you to at least consider, okay, MX. And this is something you, you, you know, and, and if you're more conservative, right, I'm not asking you to, to accept every lifestyle out there, what have you, but you can be respectful. That's all. And so... MX, right, pronounced mux quite often, right? Uh, it's simply a, a title used before a person's surname or full name by those who wish to avoid specifying their gender or by those who prefer not to identify themselves as male or female. And so if you come across that, I thought I should show you that, all right? Okay, pronounced mix or mux, right, variations. And some of you, as I said, if you're very conservative, you, you might, you know, you might think I am being politically conservative. But why is it that we have miss- or misses, okay, for women, okay, to designate their status, but only mister for men, right? Very sexist, very sexist. So anyway, I'll, get, I'll be getting email on a, from you on, on that, right? <laughs> I am not a raving conservative, but <laughs> anyway. All right, so let's finish off the day. Like I said, I thought it would be about a half an hour. And um, let's increase your vocabulary right now. And I'm not joking. So if you want to increase your vocabulary, many people will tell you read, right? Read. Just go read. That's not true. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. I'll give you an example of something. And again, worked great in class because uh, it, it is people are taken aback when I start this, this story. I'm going to end on a story. All right. So um, the other day. Uh, I was in court for reasons which are not important here. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so I was in court. And while I was sitting in court, I noticed that the judge was disinterested. So I would ask you, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, many of you might think that's a bad thing. But notice what I said. I said disinterested, not uninterested. By knowing the difference between what we call a prefix, I'm going to send you, I'll send you a file on this, all right? But noting, knowing the difference, okay, between what different pre prefixes mean, that can actually increase your vocabulary. So, uninterested, un means not. Okay. I'm just giving you one quick example, but there are hundreds. You'll see when I send you the file, you'll think, wow, right? The difference between inter and intra, right? And so 
um, the judge was disinterested. Hmm, what does that mean? Dis actually means apart, to be away from. So in other words, the judge was being objective. So when we learn our prefixes and our suffixes, okay, it's amazing how we can increase our vocabulary. So anyway, I thought maybe we'll end on that. All right. And again, half an hour. That sounds about right. And then we'll have one more lecture after this. And then, boy, the term will be over. And I did warn you at the beginning it was going to go by quickly. OK, so anyway, um, have a great rest of the day and we'll talk to you soon. OK, thanks. Bye.